medical intelligence A is by averaging scores on a large variety of different mental tests. As large a variety as you can possibly make up. The larger the number and variety of the mental tests, the better estimate you will get of this, of this intelligence A. And the most sophisticated way for averaging a large number of test scores such as this was invented by Charles Spearman way back in 1904, and it's called factor analysis. And factor analysis really gives us a weighted average of a large number of uh, mental measurements, uh, whatever measurements are put into the hopper. And um, this weighted average, the weights consist of the degree to which any one test measures what all of the tests are measuring in common. And Spearman called this common factor G for general ability. Uh, and when, you're average, when you average a whole lot of different kinds of tests, say vocabulary, arithmetic, block designs, information, various kinds of puzzles, you name it, any, any uh, mental kind of test that you could think of uh, is averaged into this thing. The, the things that are specific to those tests get averaged out, so to speak. And what comes through is some general factor. And Spearman invented this method of factor analysis that tells us to what extent any given test measures what is common to all of the tests that went into the analysis. And this is called the test's G loading, general factor loading. To what extent does the test measure what is common to all of the tests? Um, this type of factor analysis can be illustrated in this design here. This is a hierarchical factor analysis in which we start with tests, get the correlations between the tests, which yields the primary factors, first order factors. See them up there, the squares, the small squares. Uh, there are fewer factors than there are tests because many of the tests are measuring the same abilities. You have primary factors such as oh, verbal ability, spatial ability, numerical ability, mechanical ability, whatnot, memory abilities of various kinds. There, the, the number of primary factors is not at all certain. Uh, they can increase uh, as we invent more different kinds of tests, but the the number that uh, generally shows up when we factor analyze most of the existing tests is something like seven or uh, nine or so of these primary factors. Although there are more if you have rather esoteric tests that are made up for experimental purposes. Uh, the factors themselves, it turns out, are correlated with, uh, among themselves, these primary factors. So you can factor analyze the factors and get second order factors. Some of the second order factors are things like Cattell's fluid and crystallized intelligence and a, a general spatial visualization factor. Um, so I've given three of them there, these second order factors, and it turns out that they themselves are correlated among themselves. And uh, by factor analyzing the second order factors, you come out with a general factor at the top, and this is Spearman's G this general factor. Now there's some interesting things about these factors. When you go from the test to the primary factors, you're leaving out certain things, which is called specificity. It's whatever is peculiar to the individual tests uh, and cannot cor uh, correlate with other tests. So it's left out and you, you get to a higher level of abstraction at the primary factors. Um, the primary factors, however, can still be described in terms of the characteristics of the tests that went into those primary factors. Verbal tests form a verbal factor, and numerical tests form a numerical factor, and spatial tests form a spatial factor, and so on. The factors can still be described in terms of the characteristics of the tests. When you get up to the second order factors, uh, you're at a still higher level of abstraction, and it's more difficult to describe the factors in terms of the characteristics of tests because things in the primary factors are left out again. And um, you're at a higher level of generality. By the time you get to the general factor, the G factor, you can't describe it at all in terms of test characteristics. And there will be different tests 
down here at this lowest level that are equally highly loaded on the G factor, but which are extremely different. The, the two most highly G loaded tests in the Wechsler battery, you probably are all are familiar with the Wechsler battery, are vocabulary and block designs. Two tests that look very different. One's verbal, one's nonverbal, one's a performance test. Um, they're extremely different kinds of tests that seem to have nothing in common with each other, and yet they're the two most highly G-loaded tests. They're correlated very highly with whatever this factor is that's common to all tests. Now, one could go on talking for hours about G, at least I could. Um, it's a, a big topic in itself, and I've written a good deal about it, and many other people have. Spearman wrote a whole book about it, really. Uh, so I'll have to go beyond that now and uh, tell you about some of the correlates of this G factor. First of all, we know that the G factor is highly correlated with scholastic performance. In fact, the, the active ingredient in predictive validity of our intelligence test is this G factor. We know that if you partial out the G factor, get rid of it statistically, which is the only way you can get it out of any mental test. All mental tests have some of that G in, in it, uh, in them, and um, uh, they, it can be partialed out statistically. And when it is partialed out, the tests lose nearly all of their predictive validity. There's very little validity left uh, for predicting scholastic performance, job performance, uh, nearly all of the criteria for which tests have practical usefulness depends upon the G factor. And uh, people who are interested in something, uh, 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 reading something along these lines uh, further uh, are referred to the December, the coming December issue of the Journal of Vocational Behavior, which is devoted entirely to the role of G in vocational prediction and guidance. Um, and it's, it's the uh, key factor uh, in the practical usefulness of all kinds of mental tests. With, uh, these tests without G are of, uh, of almost uh, uh, useless uh, uh, worth. Um, so I'm going to be talking the rest of this lecture about G. And uh, I'm going to tell you about some of the correlates of G that are less well known than the, the ones for which G-loaded tests have been made up. Um, many tests have been made without any reference to G, but they're still highly G-loaded. In fact, it's impossible to get away from this G factor. Spearman spent many years trying to devise tests of the primary mental abilities that were pure tests of either numerical or spatial or verbal or memory abilities. And he was unable to do this. He was un unable to construct a battery of tests that were uncorrelated with one another by virtue of the fact that they all share G in common. So you can devise tests that are pure measures of verbal ability or numerical ability or whatever, plus the G factor. You can't get rid of the G. It's possible to devise tests that measure only G and nothing else, but it's not possible to devise tests that measure something other than G without G. The G is the common factor in all kinds of mental, te uh, mental tests. Now, it may be possible to find something like harness racing, uh, handicapping uh, performance that has little or no G in it. I have yet to find a test that has no G in it at all. All tests have some uh, correlation with G that's greater than zero, uh, to my knowledge. I don't know of any test that has a, a negative correlation uh, with G. Now, there are a number of uh, variables that are correlated with this G factor that I'll be talking about that show that G is more than just an artifact of the method of factor analysis or of the properties of our psychometric tests, and that our psychometric tests measure something other than just scholastic knowledge or proper language usage or uh, vocabulary and uh, knowledge of bookish words and uh, skills acquired in a culture at home or at school and so on. Uh, the tests measure something more than this as shown by the fact that these tests, particularly the G